Hi, my name is Didi. I wanted to create a video for those who have hearing loss and work in the medical field and are looking for a stethoscope that might help with their auscultation with their hearing aids. So I think I found something that might work for you. It definitely works for me. So what I did is I searched and searched for a long time and about four years ago I found this company that has a stethoscope. It's the smallest and most powerful stethoscope out there from what they've said on their website. And I purchased it and it is, it was about, I think, 600, I don't know, it's, it's pretty pricey. Right now they have a sale going on for 500 um, and I'll link that below as well as provide a picture. And it's called the Think Labs One. It's a company based out of Colorado, I believe. Um, and it's been a great uh, tool for me in my current work. So I'm a nurse and I'm also in nurse practitioner school. So not only has it been great for uh, my workplace where I currently work, it's been great during my clinicals. And so I wanted to kind of just go over the, the stethoscope and how I use it. So the Thinks Lab is um, rechargeable. It runs on a lithium battery and it has a face. I'm going to have you uh, zoom in here. The face of the stethoscope has a couple of things on it. On the very bottom, it has a scale for the volume from zero to 10. Now this stethoscope amplifies 100 times more than a regular stethoscope, which is really good. And the middle part just tells you how weak or strong your battery is. And then the top one up here um, is the hertz. And the hertz is the frequency of what you'll hear. And basically it's the bell side and the diaphragm side on one side to the other. So on this side it would be the bell and then you scroll down to the other side and that would be the diaphragm. So that you have to, you know, play around in the hertz depending on your hearing loss. When you have um, an audiologist and you get hearing aids, you are, you know, have hearing aids that are programmed to your hearing loss based off of your frequencies and how lo loud or low you need to have it. And um, I have two behind the hearing aid um, in my ears right now, and um, they have a foam mold in my ear so it's a closed system is what this called when it's closed. If you have those little tips that go inside that's more of an open um, source so it's going to be different for everybody. For my case with the behind hearing aids closed system I'm able to use it with a streamer. Um, most people like the hearing people, um, healthcare providers that use a stethoscope um, use like headphones, big headphones, or they use little plugs in their ears, just like you would use on your phone or uh, whatnot. And so what I've done is I purchased a streamer that is the same company of my hearing aids. So I have Phonics hearing aids and I have a Phonics uh, streamer. And the streamer is, um, I think it cost me like I don't know, a couple hundred bucks, maybe 300 bucks. Um, I went through my audiologist and got that one. Um, I don't advise buying it online because I did that, that in the past and it didn't work. So um, go through the audiologist because they can test it with you and make sure that that particular streamer works with your hearing aid because they're not universal. Um, some are, and I don't have a lot of experience with it. I just wanted to talk about what I have. So I have a phonic streamer. It's called a Calm Pilot 2 and it's made by Phonics and so are my hearing aids. So those two work together, they're compatible. And from here, um, what I've done is I also got a stereo cord. It's a, a typical stereo cord or wire, whatever you call it. And on the end, it has um, the male side that has two black stripes, if you will. And that works great into a phone or, you know, not the latest um, iPhone, unless you get an adapter for that. But most of the time you can plug this into anything and listen to music that way or, or listen to your phone or whatever it is. But this one does not work in the Thinks Lab. And, and so when I plug it in, it's very loose. It just kind of like wants to fall out. So I had to find something that was going to work in the Think Labs stethoscope. And so I had to get an adapter. And the end of this adapter, 
you'll see that it actually has three strips. So I'm not technical with this, you know, maybe you guys can tell me what the name of these things are, whether it's a 3.5 millimeter, one and eighth inch, I don't know. I have no idea. But I knew I had to have those three black strips in order for it to work in my stethoscope. So you plug it in and it fits nice. It's not loose at all. It won't come out easy. And then I can plug in the wire and now I have a nice secure, um, you know, entry into the stethoscope. The other end just is a typical two stripe. Please help me with, tell me what that is. But there's a two stripe um, and a male end. And that's just going to go in the uh, streamer itself. So it is a direct audio streaming to my ears. So, and what I mean by that is my hearing aids are programmed by my audiologist. And so now the stethoscope goes through the wire to my streamer and it automatically goes directly through to my hearing aids through my programs, which is really a plus. So that's kind of a cool feature. Now, when I'm gonna be turning on the stethoscope and I'll have you zoom in, or I'll zoom you in, and um, I'm gonna show you how it turns on. And you'll see that the stethoscope will start blinking. And when it starts blinking, then it will tell you what your last setting was, which is great. So you don't have to set it every single time. That's awesome. So the bottom is a volume and I have it set at four. Now I have um, severe to profound hearing loss. Most of my good ear, my right ear is my good ear. That's where I hear most of my sounds. My left is not very good. I can't, I don't have very good word recognition over there, but I do hear a little bit of sound. So I have it at four. Sometimes I may have to go up to five, but I haven't been able, you know, I haven't had to go past five, which is really good. So it is a zero to 10. Again, it's a hundred times more um, amplified than any other stethoscope. So it's much louder than any other stethoscope. The top part, I have it set. I think I have it set in the middle. I have it set in the middle. So I'm between the bell and the diaphragm. So I picked a frequency that works for me so that I can hear or auscultate sounds well on lungs, heart, or even your, the uh, belly, the abdomen. So that's set for me and the battery life is good. I just charged it not too long ago. So from here, I will go ahead and place it on my chest and listen for my heart sound. And what I will hear is the lub dub, like you should hear. Um, and I, if I had a murmur, I'd be able to hear it. So I've been able to identify murmurs and S3s on patients without a problem with the stethoscope. The stethoscope itself does turn off after two minutes on its own, which is good so it won't drain your battery. Now the wire itself, I'm going to turn this off. And you can see it starts blinking. The wire itself, I kind of put this, you know, I decorated it with this kind of turtle looking pattern for kids. Um, and I wanted to do that because I'm going to be doing pediatric rotation next semester. And, but the fact is, is that when I have it around my, my neck like this, it's very techy. You know, it's, it's got a bunch of wires and all you see is wires. So I wanted to break it up a little bit so they're not so distracted by the you know, I felt like I was more of a robot coming in with a bunch of wires. So now I have come, some color. I have um, another cover coming in that I ordered, um, custom ordered. So I will share a review on that when I get that, the big, you know, blue, white, bright color thing. But anyway, and I also have a little, um, a little bear on the bottom of it, just as cute, you know, to try to break it up. Again, I'll try to decorate this at some point. I just haven't done it. I'm going to turn my streamer off, which will say calm pilot off. And you won't hear that because it's going through my hearing aid. So this is where it sits on my chest and that's fine. Now this streamer is pretty long. So if I lean over, it's going to hit, you know, anybody in front of me. You can get a shorter cord for most streamers. I have one that's um, much shorter that I ordered through my audiologist and it's, it's great. So I can put it around and it actually will plug into my streamer and I'll show you how I do that. So I unplug my streamer on both sides and then I put the new one on and wrap it around my neck and put it on my neck. 
and now I have it a little higher. So it's not going to be so much of a force of the streamer hitting my patient. It's going to be coming, you know, staying closer to my body. But I have a lot of room with this wire. I'm still exploring and investigating how I might be able to shorten it, make it a little, you know, not so, I don't need to listen so far away. I only have to go about this far. So I don't need all this cord. And it it's looks like a regular stethoscope, right? But you can also have it off your neck and just put it in your lab jacket if you have one, or you can put it in your pocket. You know, I've done that before. Um, it, this is just quick and easy, and I can just go ahead and just do it like this. Um, so that's the stethoscope. That's the Think Labs One stethoscope with a phonic streamer going to my phonics hearing aids. And uh, it's worked really, really good for me. I wouldn't change it for anything. It's expensive, yes, but it's well worth it. So I hope that helps. And if you have any comments or if you like this video and found it helpful, I would love to know that. If you didn't find it helpful, I'd like to know that too. All right, so take care and good luck. Thanks, bye.